Welcome to another Cyberverse video. Today I wanna do a very special video so here are my thoughts on the first movie of Cyberverse Season 4. Yes, I know it's actually called Bumblebee Cyberverse Adventure but let's face it, it's too long so I decide to call this Cyberverse Season 4. This movie was incredibly awesome. There were a lot of experience we see throughout this movie. For example, we see lists of YouTubers who are a fan of the Transformers community. We get to finally see the mercenaries again. We were introduced to the Dinobits and to make this more shorter. It was honestly the best movie properly out of the three seasons we've seen before. So without further to do, here are my thoughts on the first movie. We firstly start off with Arky and Grimlock have an adventure, just like in season 2 episode 17. Once they got into the ship, they found the Enigma of Combination, which reminds me of that Prime Wars season Combiner Wars, although they do kinda look the same, the colors are different, but that is fine. After this incredible intro, we see the Autobots and Decepticons signing a peace. And like in my trailer breakdown, Megatron isn't around so it confirms that he sadly died in Season 3. As soon as they were about to sign in, they were immobilized by a mysterious ship. This ship kinda reminds me with the Quintessons, because of the tentacles and the way it looks. It was then we were introduced to the new mercenaries. Sadly we didn't get Double Dealer, Exhaust and Thrust, but we still got some interesting ones like Nightbird who was a ninja robot in G1 and would play for the new upcoming Transformer movie, Rise of the Beast, and she is my favorite in the series. Next was Bugbite, who made an appearance in Earthrise, and this voice really does play his character role. Then we had Afterburner who I never seen before. Double Crosser was the Earthrise Battle Master toy, but at least he not a tiny mercenary, and finally we have the leader Sound Blaster, who I'm guessing is taking Double Dealer's role as the leader of the faction. I must say, it was totally unexpected but at least we got more of the mercenaries in this show. And speaking of which I think this idea was given from Earth Rise. We then see the new Dinobots Sludge, Snarl, Slug, and Swoop. They once had a leader named Tiny Arms, which I think's a joke for T-Rex that have tiny arms. Sadly he died so we didn't get to see him. They also receive Grimlock's transmitter that we've previously saw back in King of the Dinosaurs Season 1. They used the Enigma of Combination and combined into Volcanicus. When researching the Enigma, Swoop mentions TF Wiki, which is a real-life website for Transformers info not to mention we also did get names of YouTubers. I like how Sound Blaster and Soundwave had a history together, since they have the same character model. We finally learn that Soundwave beat Sound Blaster and Mac Adams, and I like how we see some old faces that sadly died. When Sound Blaster took Laser Beak from Soundwave, I thought he was about to kill him but he forcefully pushed him there into his chest and it makes me feel bad for Laser Beak and Soundwave. After Volcanicus defeated the mercenaries, we were then introduced to Triptychon. This Triptychon isn't really that scary, but I still like him. Sound Blaster lost his legs, and when Sound Blaster yells Nightbird to help him, this reminds me how in the Transformers movie, Soundwave was the last and only deception to stay back and bring Megatron with him. Volcanicus then gets Triptychon immobilized and frees everyone on Cybertron. This movie was the best, I like how they featured more of the mercenaries, Volcanicus, and Triptychon including funny scenes. Well did you like this episode? If so you can watch it on YouTube and the movie will be in the link of the description. That is it for now, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you for the next movie.